Hey there and welcome to my channel. My name is Rocco and over here I do Daz 3D tutorial videos to help you to get the most out of your own renders. And welcome to the next video in my beginners to advanced tutorial series that I'm embarking upon. Uh, last time out we took a look at the viewport, its controls and how to customise it to get it looking exactly how we want it to look. Uh, if you've not checked out that video yet then you can find a link up in the top right hand corner on the screen. So make sure you give that one a watch and head back here when you're done. Well, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the scene tab, which is this window that we see up here. If you have watched the previous video, the one I just mentioned, you'll see, you remember that we described the viewport as a visual representation of what is in our scene. Well, the scene tab, the best way to describe that is then a textual representation of what we have in our scene. Everything that exists in the viewport over here will also be represented in the scene tab. And through the use of both of these, these, these windows, we can create, edit and manipulate our scene until our hearts are content. Now, if we just come across to our viewport for a moment, we can see that we have a few items that are visible. Of course, we have our model here all suited and booted and ready, ready for us in a pose. We also, as you can see, we have a camera. We have a little spotlight over here and we have in the background a backdrop and we can see these things a little bit more clearly if we spin our perspective view around. Now, if we were to come back over to our scene tab over here, we can see that the things that we can see in our viewport are also represented here. Forget about these top two for now. These are just something that Daz adds into uh, the scene to allow us to be able to render things. We'll get around to them at uh, another video. Uh, but for now, as you can see, we can see our spotlight. We can see our camera. We can see the backdrop. And of course, we can see our model now if we were to select the camera in our scene tab by just clicking on it you will see that it also selects it over here in the viewport and likewise if we were to come across to the spotlight over there and give that a click you can see that we select it in the viewport but it then also selects it in the scene tab and likewise if we wanted to choose our model and select our model we would click her in the scene tab like this and we can see with the bound and box around her that she has been selected. Now we do have a little bit of an issue here because if we do want to select our entire model, let's say we want to move her in scene, we can only select her in the scene tab. If we go to select her over here in the viewport, take a look what happens here. We come across where she is and we give her a click. Look at what's happened over here in the scene tab. We've actually selected a left thigh because obviously that's where I clicked. Now, the reason why this happens is because some objects uh, in scenes uh, have a hierarchical structure beneath them. I think that's the right term for it, uh, where things get attached to other things and they appear underneath them so if i was to come up up to our model once more and i was to double click on our model you can see this hierarchy that exists likewise we could use this little arrow over on the, the left there uh, the little arrow by the way will indicate that there are items or objects attached to this particular item that we have selected so if we give that arrow a click or we double click on the name itself this hierarchy becomes apparent to us and visual visible to us so that when we've clicked on our model's thigh We've actually clicked on the left thigh and the, the scene tab then represents that. Now, as you can see underneath her here, we've got all these other items that are connected to our model. So we've got her eyes. She needs a pair of eyes. Uh, the tear is there's some moisture in the eye. We've got a mouth there and her eyelashes that are there. But we can also see that we've got her hair and the, the, the clothing objects that she's wearing. Now, this is important because if we were to move our model, if you take a look, I'll just quickly do this in the viewport. Uh, you'll see that all the items and all the objects that are attached to her move with the model herself. And I'll just come up to this button up here to put her back into place and undo what I've just done. However, if we were to select one of these objects and then try to move it, even though we'll move the viewport gadget, we won't actually move uh, that item or that particular clothing piece in that case. Now we'll take a look at how we can build this hierarchy and how we add, add items to other items and attach items in, in another video, probably the next video or maybe the one after that when we start building uh, our characters up from scratch. 
But for now, it is important to us to know, while we're looking at the scene tab, that this hierarchy does exist and these things can be attached to other objects and items. And it's important to know how uh, we can get to see them. So like I mentioned, we can either double click on a on a on an item like, like our genesis 9 female here or we can use the little clicky arrow that's over on the left to reveal the structure now there are other ways we can do this as well uh that time saving things if we wanted to reveal a head for instance over here in this in a skeleton uh we could click on spine one we climb two spine three and we could keep on going down until we eventually get to our model's head we could just click it in the viewport of course but sometimes you might need to click through things in the scene tab uh, if i close everything up again because obviously that was a little bit of a a bit of a pain and it hurt my finger with all the repetitive use of my fingers one of the things that we can do we could click on a body part so for instance if we were on spine have it selected and then right click on our menu you can see this little context menu crops up i'm not going to go through all the items here but if we do just come down to expand we can either look at one of these three options we can expand everything in our scene which we don't really want to do we can expand selected which will only select this selected item that we've got there or we could do expand from selected and then that'll expand out everything below uh, the spine in the hierarchy so you can see these all these bones from uh you know a belly for instance here, upwards throughout our entire uh, model likewise we could right click and come to collapse and do the same thing and it will close everything up for us as you can see now if we would just want to, to collapse our model down again just by double clicking on it to to achieve that quick and easy uh, and then i'm just going to left click or right click on the an empty part of our panel our scene tab uh, to unselect it you may see these two little icons that are next to each individual thing that we've got here one looks like a little open eye and the other one looks like a well it is an arrow with a check mark next to it uh, these two icons allow us to both hide things that are in the scene and to make things selectable and unselectable within the scene or with certainly within the viewport uh, so for instance if we were to come up to our camera and we were to give the camera a, a click in the viewport you can see that uh, we select the camera in the cue port and in the scene tab but uh, if we were to ro rotate our perspective view around for a moment and we wanted to actually select our model every time we go to select our model we would actually select the camera so what we can do if we come up to the little icon with the arrow and the, the tick mark next to it next to camera and just give that a click you can see that the check mark turns into a little cross and a little x now what that means is it's impossible for us to select our camera in the viewport again if i just slide around for a moment uh with the cam with the perspective view we cannot click and select the camera in our viewport the only way we can select our camera now is by selecting it in the scene tab uh and once again if we do want to now make it selectable we just click that icon again the check mark will come back and now we can click and select our camera in the viewport again so that little icon allows us uh, or makes things selectable or unselectable in the viewport which is important uh the next icon the icon the eye icon turns things on and off or makes things visible or invisible in our scene so if we take a look at the the spotlight over there we can see it over there in the corner if we just click on that eye icon next to the spotlight in our scene tab the spotlight disappears now we get rid of the spotlight and we also get rid of any light that that spotlight uh would provide into our scene if we click the icon again you can see it's turned to a closed eye if we click it again the spotlight comes back uh if we do the same with the camera we turn the camera off and it's not visible in the scene however if we come up to our little camera select things up here we can still look through the camera as though uh it was still there in the scene uh turn it back on we don't see anything there obviously because we're looking out of it but come back to perspective and there's the camera again uh likewise when we come to our model if we come to the eye icon and give her a click something strange happens and what's actually happened here is when we've made the model invisible it's only applied it to the skin and the surface texture on our model if we were to expand the model out for a moment by double clicking on it you can see that everything else that's attached to our model still has the eye icon fully open which means as you can see it's everything's still visible and it leaves us with this rather funny and humorous looking model 
over here. Now, there are two ways in which we can ensure that everything gets turned off. We can, of course, individually click every single icon that comes down here. So we could take off a uh, shirt and her sweater without any fear of YouTube, uh, you know, getting all antsy over a bit of smut on screen because there's nothing underneath. Likewise, we could turn them back on by clicking the icon again and it will turn them on individually now having to do that on and off on and off all the time with every item that's attached to something can get a bit tiresome uh, the, un the other way and the alternative way to do it, and the more efficient way to do it is by creating a group and now what a group actually does is it allows us to group objects and items within our scene into a container that allows us to to either hide them all up you know very much like what you see here in the hierarchy with our with our model or to apply various actions to the group that will apply to every object or item in that group so if we were to come up to, to the genesis knife here we'll just close her up again by double clicking uh, and we'll also turn her skin back on uh, if we come up to this menu at the top the menu options and to the create menu you can see there's a whole load of things in there that we're able to create and add into our scene. We're going to ignore all them, but just come down to the one that says new group and give it a click. And this dialogue window will open up. Uh, what we might want to do, for instance, we might want to come to label and we might want to call it something. So I'm just going to call it uh, model. This is the, the name of our group that we're creating. And then we've got these various options underneath. We can ignore most of these. Uh, the only ones that are really... Uh, important or would really be useful to us are the apply default settings at the top and the parent selected item which is the one that's selected by default when we are creating a new group in this first of all what i'm going to do i'm just going to click the apply default settings uh for the moment just so we can see a default group and then i'm going to hit accept and as you can see up in our scene tab a group has been created uh into our scene there's nothing in it, but it's signified by this little circle. There's nothing in there. It's just a standalone group uh, that's just empty with nothing going. Now, if we want to put something in that group, what we can do, if we come up to our Genesis 9 model, select it with our left mouse button and then drag. So we want to hold and drag until it highlights the group. As you can see, that little yellow border is, is signifying it. And then just drop it and letting go of our mouse button, you can see that it's dropped our female, our Genesis 9 female, into this group that we've got. And now what we can do, we can apply our visible or invisible icon and give it a click, and our entire model will now turn off. Uh, because that icon is now applying, it's, it's, it's being applied to everything that was within that group. So if we were to expand out our Genesis 9 female, you can see that everything has had its uh, visible icon turned off. Likewise, we come back up to the model and we, we click it again to turn it all back on. Everything gets turned on in one go. You can also see there that I've accidentally clicked the uh, selectable icon as well. And you can see that it's applied that also. And again, if I just click on that selectable icon, you can see the check marks tied to an X and everything in that group can now be uh, selected in scene. Now, when we went to create this group, you'll remember there was a, a default action that was selected called per parent selected items to this group. Uh, what that allows us to do is to create a group and everything that we have selected in our scene tab will be automatically placed into that group. So we don't have to, you know, click and hold and grab and, and move things around once the group's created. And how we're going to do this is we're going to select multiple items in the uh, scene tab we're going to click spotlight because we want that included and then i'm going to hold down control on the pc and i'm going to click on camera and as you can see we select both of those items another way that we can do it is if we we click on spotlight again uh, and this time hold down shift and then click on backdrop it will select everything between uh, those two items and include those two things that we've clicked on now once we have uh, one or more items selected if we come back up to the create and then the new group and this option like i said is in there parents selected items to the new group this is the default action when that we do this and if we come up to label and i'll just call this stuff just for quickness sakes when we now click accept all of these three items are going to be automatically placed in this group called stuff that we create so we hit accept and everything automatically 
comes into the stuff directory or the, the the stuff group that we've created and if we come back out to perspective view once again if we click on the eye icon next to stuff everything else gets turned off because it gets supplied to everything in the group and likewise everything turns back on when we uh make everything visible again and that is more or less the scene tab in a nutshell for us there are a couple of more things for instance if we right click on the tab itself we can get uh, this really big long uh, or big context menu that crops up most of it is self-evident that we can see uh you know we get the expand and the collapses that we had uh, earlier on and you know we can show various things in the in the tab or not and select various things uh, in groups and, and in batches that we can do so that that i'm not going to go through the entirety of that menu have a look through it if you have any questions about it then just drop it down in the comment section below and i'll, I'll try and answer it for you as best that i can one other final thing that we can take a look at is this bar up at the top here where we say enter text to filter by uh this is just like a little uh, a filter section we can we can put something in that we can uh wipe everything out of the the scene that's it or that's certainly been shown in the scene tab uh and just leave what we want to be able to see because if it can get quite busy in there if you've got quite a complicated scene so for instance we've got camera in there in in the that group call stuff if i just type in here camera you can see everything starts to get filtered out leaving only the camera now you will remain that it will keep the hierarchy in place to show what directories and what groups these things are in uh, but it just allows us to highlight or, or separate out all the cameras that would be in our scene likewise uh, if we did spotlight it would find the spotlight for us uh I don't know where else we can put their skirt that the model is wearing. I know that that's something we can put in. And as you can see, there's the model. And if we bring that out, you can see Genesis 9 female, and then it will show the skirt there. So that's like a little filter. And if you want to clear that box out in one go, you just click this X over here and everything gets unfiltered once again. And that is our scene tab in a nutshell. As I said, there's little things in there that we could go into, but uh, it's probably not really worth the video time for us to do that. Uh, so if you do have any questions about anything that I, I have touched or I haven't even touched upon in the, in this uh, little video, just drop them down below in the uh, comment section I'll, and I'll do my best to answer that question. And that's it. I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, if so, give it a like down below as that will really help me out in the algorithms with YouTube. Uh, and also I'll be highly appreciative of it. And likewise, if you've not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the little notification bell so that you get notified when more videos drop. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.